allow a human being to come to harm. Like, there's millions of people coming to harm right now. There's like 30,000 children that will die today while we're sitting here talking about this. It's unbelievable. If those laws were applied, the whole world would be reformatted under a robotic intelligence that probably puts all of us under lock and key because it's so uncomfortable to any rational being what we do to ourselves. So then they're going to look at us from a you know a biological perspective and they see anger, jealousy, greed, envy, dominance, hatred, racism, like all of this stuff. And like, ah! You know, they're just going to go nuts when they start looking at the wiring that evolution has given us. Because it's nuts. Just anger alone is nuts. So, and then... There you go, look at this. Okay. So, just think about that list. Breast implants. What is a super intelligence going to make of breast implants or high heel shoes? So they're either going to think it's insane or they're going to think it's cute like we think <laughs> bird mating rituals are cute. So it's going to be the female of the species <laughs> finds objects in her environment, typically from retail ecosystems that exist in her habitat. And she adorns herself with those in order to send sexual signals to the male of the species. Let us examine high heel shoes as an example of this phenomenon. You know, are they going to have shows like that? No, they don't need shows like that. They're going to look at this and think we're insane. It's just, it, it, it's hard to understand. So what are they going to do with us? What are they going to do with us? They're either going to exterminate us, or they're going to create nature preserves like we do for animals now, or they're going to stick us in brain farms. In other words, they're going to discard our bodies, and they're going to take our brains, and they're going to hook them up to video game systems and porn systems, and let us just sit there and enjoy ourselves until our brains naturally wash out, right? Those... I, you could argue that they're going to upload our brains, but why? Why would you upload this, you know, to, to technology? It's just, I, it's hard to imagine them doing that. So these are their three choices. And the thing about extermination is that if you think about it, a robot's going to look at us, you know, the way we look at chimps. Right? But then it's going to advance and it's going to look at us at the way we look at chickens. And then it's going to advance some more and it's going to look at us the way we look at bacteria. And we kill millions of bacteria on contact with Lysol every day. We don't care, right? Because they're so far beneath us, we don't care. So robots, potentially, if they get advanced enough, are going to do the same thing. You know, potentially. But it depends on... Uh, well, let me skip this slide. <laughs> I think what happens to relationships, I was specifically asked this question, is we all end up, if the robots are nice, in brain farms with the video game systems, and the video game system just does what we want it to do. We don't have interactions with separate human beings. Each of us just have a planet of one, and we interact with all these beings in a virtual reality that's designed to make us happy. That's what I think happens. <laughs> so if you like porn, you get lots of porn. If you want to be the ruler of Rome in, you know, 2,000 years ago, you can do that. You do whatever you want. So this is the thing I think is interesting. What happens with robot morality? It's a super intelligence, so it's hard for us to predict what it does. But what do they do with themselves? So. You know, do they do experiments and try to figure out everything about the universe? Probably. That seems like a noble goal. So they figure out everything about the universe. Do they replicate endlessly? That's what humans seem to do. But do robots do that? Like, do they say, wow, we're here, we're now, let's go, next planet, let's, you know, turn that into robots. It's the paperclip replicator thing, if you've ever looked that up. It's a really interesting hypothesis. So do they do that, or do they look and they say... You know, we could replicate endlessly and turn all the matter of the universe into robots, or we could not. You know, we could stop. Like, why, rep if you know everything about the universe, why replicate infinitely? What's the point? Do they just go and kind of mellow out and stop replicating and, and be? Or, so, yeah, I don't think we can even determine.
determined because we, we don't have the kind of visibility that they'll have. So, uh, two thoughts to wrap up with. One is, uh, you know, one of the reasons why we call the singularity the singularity is because supposedly we don't know what happens when we hit it. That's, you know, we can't predict what happens. But I think we can pretty simply predict what will happen is that we are on the process of creating the second intelligence species, which will then advance at Moore's law rate to become super intelligent, and we become irrelevant, you know, or hideous in their eyes, depending on how you want to think about it. And then the second thing is, if you think about this and kind of carry it out, what you realize about human consciousness is that each of us represents a tiny little slice of consciousness. Like, our selves was formed by looking at the world through a tiny peephole over time while our brains were developing. So, you know, if we had a childhood that was really crappy, that affects us in adulthood differently from if we were rich in childhood and became adults. And, you know, we experience this little tiny slice of the universe. So each one of us represents whatever little slice of the world we saw in the time sequence we saw it and how you know, we evaluated that. That's why we're all different. If you have robotic consciousness, they're not going to, you know, let's say there's two robotic super intelligences and one of them's not going to say to the other one, hey, dude, did you ever think about blah? And he's going to say, yeah, yeah, I thought about that. They're all going to have thought about everything. They're going to have access uh, John just mentioned that we have the whole you know, universe of knowledge available to us electronically. They're going to have access to everything, and they're not going to have a time sequence, and they're going to think about it in the same way. This robotic consciousness is going to be you know, like an aggregate, a super aggregate of all our little tiny slices of consciousness all in one place. We can't predict what that will do because we don't have any way to really even contemplate it or you know imagine it but it's a really interesting way to think of it that each one of us is a is this little sliver of of real consciousness of full consciousness that we got from our peephole over time so uh, if you want to learn more you can come to marshallbrain.com thank you